All right, we are live with the Audience Awards. I'm Lynn Woodfields. And I'm Kate Truesdell. We have the filmmakers of the top Project Earth Doc Challenge film, Bulgarian Solution, with us today. Um, thank you guys so much for joining. Do you mind introducing yeah. yourself and talking a little bit about your part in the film? Yeah, guys. Hi there. Uh, my name is uh, Stani. I'm the uh, okay producer slash uh, director slash uh, hold the camera slash hold the, the lights uh, guy. So, uh, like, do everything. You guys, Eric? Yeah, so I'm Eric Halsey. Um, I was a screenwriter, the, the guy who kind of originated the main idea. I did the narration and, uh, you know, went along for the rest of the ride. Yeah, he was supposed to be an actor, but then he came up with all these brilliant ideas, so we couldn't stop him. <laughs> I'm Andy, and I'm the editor of the film. Great. Yeah. And, and, and it's like, she, she, she's straight, straight on, the, uh, on the task, you know, like, I'm Andy, and I'm the editor. If you have any and I found that anything? challenge. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, actually, actually, this, uh, it's, this is very interesting because Andy, it, uh, it's because of her uh, we we participated this, uh, in the audience challenge because it was kind of a downtime in the um, uh, in the studio back then, and she said, "Hey, I found this thing. Let's let's join." And I said, "Yeah, sure. Let's let's do something. Let's uh, let's go and uh, shoot a movie." And uh, then. Like things got really hot and we didn't sleep for three days and uh, and everybody was, okay, Andy, it's your fault. You got us into this. <laughs> so um, this film team made a film in 120 hours under an assigned genre and theme. So what was it like preparing for to create a film um, under a genre that you were unaware of, um, knowing you would only have 120 hours? <laughs> Well, uh, I, uh, for most, it was like super exciting uh, because um, it, like everyone starts, you know, like from ground zero and uh, we have to figure it out. And of course, it's very, it very much depends on your luck because I was thinking, what, what would we have, uh, what, what would have we done if it was like oceans because we don't have an ocean in Bulgaria, so... Uh, so climate change, uh, and I, I, I believe that um, um, uh, uh, the, the main reason for us uh, getting um, an interesting movie was that we managed to, you know, twist the subject uh, uh, to, towards uh, what's happening here in Bulgaria and uh, like a, a very, you know, local case. Uh, so it was crazy challenging, and I, I, I recall that we spent like four hours uh, digging ideas and brainstorming. And we were almost, you know, about, uh, let's give up. It's not going to work. <laughs> but Eric, you should share some more because it's your yeah. idea. Yeah, the, the, that was the, the kind of main question is like, okay, what do we have to say about climate change? I mean, there's been, you know, a million articles and documentary films. There's so much out there about it. What, what on earth could we contribute? And so, yeah, I had to really think of, okay, what's unique about Bulgaria? What's what? what do we have here that, that could kind of say something about this? And I thought about, uh, yeah, some of the more extreme, yeah, in our case, population decline circumstances and how Bulgaria, like a lot of parts of Europe, are experiencing a lot of rewilding. That there is new uh, animal species that are coming that haven't existed for centuries or, or even a couple, just sometimes a couple of decades. So I kind of thought about, okay, what are our local narrow experiences and how can we kind of extrapolate that to create some kind of story that's really emotionally engaging and really makes people think. But yeah, as to more your question, it was stressful. It was, uh, you know, as Tommy said, a lot, of, a lot of days of very little sleep, waking up super early, working late, and just sort of... Uh, yeah, we pretty much lived in, uh, in Stani's company's garage headquarters <laughs> for, for those nine days. Yeah, uh, like, like the, uh, uh, that was the Eric's complicated way to say that we had actually no clue what we were doing <laughs> most of the time. No, just kidding. But that's true. Uh, we had this uh, headquarters slash garage thing and, uh, and we just literally slept there. Can you guys tell me what it's like to make a film in that time versus when you have plenty of time, you just have to come up with ideas? Were there pros and cons to that? Honestly, I love it. I love it because I think that um, w uh, when you have this time restriction, you have to be very uh, nitpicking about what you're going to spend your time on. 
and uh, not to worry too much about details, but more about the the, the big uh, picture, about the the global scale, and uh, and I think that helps us uh, a lot. And I think that if we had more time, we would have uh, wasted it into you know just wondering should we go this direction or that direction, um, and. Uh, I think that when you're like really time restricted, you should deliver like the best out of it, the raw experience of it, and not worry about all these fine details when you have all the time in the world. And I don't know, Andy should tell us because at the end of the day, she's the one who have to review through all our quickly shot footage and you know like edit something that that's meaningful. I would love to hear about the editing. I'm an editor too, and how that went, how you were streamlining it. It was a lot of stress. I was eight months pregnant, oh. and the, the shots came in the last minute. And uh, I was going in one direction with edit, and they bring me shots that I didn't know that we were going to shoot, and I have where to put them. <laughs> and uh, the, the cinematographer, the director uh, said, okay, it's three in the morning, we're going to sleep, or can we go home? And I was, no, nobody will go home, you're going to stay here, and you're going to suffer with me. <laughs> so yep, that was it. we edited it and color edited it like about 6 a.m. and start exporting it. Oh. And we uploaded the video at 7.00. 59 in the last yeah. minute literally in <laughs> the last was, minute so that was true last minute last minute like guilty I, last minute <laughs> after that uh, 24 hours editing i was starting coloring my hair <laughs> it was great <laughs> so that was the first uh, challenge that we take for so short time for our team and i think that it was very helpful for us and educational because uh, how many, if we had a lot of time, I think that we are going to do it in the last minute again. <laughs> so, <laughs> <laughs> better that way. So, so is true. this the first time you all work together? Is this your first project? Or for, you... for that short time, yes. Okay. We worked, uh, he and his team, uh, the Stani team, have uh, worked together for a lot of years. I'm with him for the last year. So we, when we have a project, we have a week or at least five days. But now, uh, 120 hours, come on. That, I mean. That's, that's not true. That's not true. Like, when, when, we have, when we have projects, we usually have like a month. Like, she has a week for the editing but like to come up with the whole project that's a whole different story so like we uh, truth is that uh, once before we did an animation for 54 hours and it was uh, like a similar craze but then we had uh, all the free uh, we were free to pick our own ideas so it was a, a lot more easier and doing animation doesn't require you to you know go to locations and wait for the perfect lightning so uh, I think that th this one it was even a little bit more challenging, but uh, but but me and the team uh, we we were we were working together on a lot of uh, corporate projects, so we are kind of you know uh, glued together. So we know our workflow and uh, we know the the equipment, the the pipeline. So it's uh, it's much easier. Eric is actually he, the new guy here. He never never worked with us before, so he should share his experience. Yeah, I mean, uh, I, I've never been involved in making any kind of a film or documentary ever. I mean, I'm a, I'm a historian by training, and nowadays I, I, I'm a writer. I work with entrepreneurship, uh, leading some. I do some project management. I I do do voiceovers. That that is something that I actually do. But but in general, Stani just sort of said, "Hey, I'm do, we're doing this thing. You want to come along?" I was like, "Well, I mean, because I'm a freelancer, my schedule's flexible. I, I can take a couple days and just." run off and do this and you know half of it I was thinking uh, at that time an, uh, an old friend of mine from university was visiting me here from the US and was thinking like well we're doing some uh, documentary project about uh, you know the environment so we'll probably be traveling around the country and this will be a nice way for me to, to let my friends see a bit of Bulgaria 
you know, without having to like, I don't know, rent a car or something expensive. So, I mean, half me saying yes was like, this will be a nice way for my friend who's visiting to, to like see some cool stuff. Um, but yeah, I just kind of jumped in here, but, uh, but lucky for me, yes, yeah, Sunny has a really good team and I think we, we worked together really well. It was an absolute pleasure. Uh, so yeah, it was kind of just a trial by fire. I just get thrown in there and figure out how everything works. So your film had really great success. Uh, what are your plans for the future with the success? Oh my God, like, uh, <laughs> once, okay, once we get sober after the celebration, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> uh, because like such a, big, such a great success, we need to, you know, uh, be celebrated properly. But once we get, uh, 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 you know, to uh, get our um, thoughts back together, uh, Definitely, like a big step for us, um, and it's uh, uh, not entirely on. Oh, okay, let's do a film because we don't have anything to do. It's uh, part of our uh, of, of of the strategy of the big uh, plan, uh, and the, the big plan is, um, you know, uh, sorry for that, guys. Um, <clears throat> the big plan is uh, okay. Uh, obviously, we do a lot of uh, commercial projects uh, for companies, and we shoot a lot of um, a, a, a lot of you know. Uh, uh, like paid jobs, but uh, we are very much interested into producing uh, content, producing our own films, uh, shorts, documentaries, whatever. So I think that was uh, a very important first step for us. Uh, uh, obviously, uh, on on the learning side and the learning curve on this was a really thing that we learned a lot from trying to do uh, any kind of film in uh, five days on a given uh, theme. Uh, but uh, more important, I think that uh, the next our next step should be like try to get like a, uh, another short movie. Probably do it for more than five days. Try to get like a better quality, uh, a more interesting idea. But that's definitely our road to success. We want to we want to go there. Make uh, make more uh, shorts. Learn how to make uh, films and make more films. Yeah, and are you considering submitting this to other festivals? We've had a lot of people who've done fusion challenges spend the next year screening all over the world. Yeah, I, I, like I, sh I should tell you that one of the most unfortunate things was that we couldn't make it to, to New York, obviously because yeah. of financial reasons. It was like super expensive to get there, just, just you know, to get our film screening, but... Uh, uh, but you know, like to, to miss the, the, sc the screening of your first film, uh, like on a big screen, and, and, and then win words, I, I, I kind of I, I kind of regret that. We should have been there. Uh, but um, there are opportunities, though. Um, many. I, I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm really interested. Yeah, I'm really interested on uh, on the schedule. What what you guys are planning about uh, uh, about all the finalists and uh, what are the next festivals? And probably we can make it for some of the next festivals. I don't know. That, that's going to be awesome. Yeah. yeah we'd love to About the future, I just want to say that my plans are Dolby Digital Theater, here we come. <laughs> so. sure, sure thing, absolutely. Like, <laughs> in stereo. How did you find out about it in Bulgaria? About um, well, they, uh, in a site, they were like uh, a commercial, and because I haven't what to do, and I just said like a joke. <laughs> I mean, look what they are doing. Uh, it's a documentary film. And yeah, she, she was like, oh, okay, so let's do it. Like, we, we, don't ha uh, we, uh, we are not having anything to do better. And I was like, okay, let him talk. And <laughs> after a few hours, he was like, I signed this in. And I was like, <laughs> why do I have to open my mouth? <laughs> Yeah, it was precisely like that. Like she, she was joking and like testing my nerves. So yeah, why don't you do that? And then I like, just, you know what? Like I just paid the fee, so we are in. So like and, now, <laughs> let's see you guys. <laughs> and the other funny thing was that in the night when we were editing, everyone was like very, they wanted to sleep and uh, uh, they thought that we are never going to make it and was like, oh, let's not forget why we are doing this and uh, whose fault is this. <laughs> and after a month, uh, when Stani said, we won like this award, this award, this award, and I was like, who was false? <laughs> Thank you. All the credit. Yeah, they better post it last night. 
<laughs> guys, guys, the truth, the truth is that Andy is the boss behind the curtains. Like I'm, you know, I'm just bossing around, but she's actually like running the whole show. Like when she says sleep, we sleep. When she says you don't sleep, we don't sleep. We get it. That's that. That's the reality. That she she has, you know, this heart kick. Like when she kicks us in our asses, yeah, go out there, get this footage I need right away. That's it. That's but awesome. you know, it, it it takes it takes a woman, you know, to to do this. So I I'm just you know I I I just sit back and you know just follow the uh the uh, the the procedure. <laughs> And so just to recap, um, your team won best film in the challenge, um, fusion selection, best film in the challenge um, at the doc challenge selection. You won best editing, best directing, and overall best use of theme, your theme being climate change. Yeah, we actually we actually told that we should fire the cameraman because we didn't get the best cinematography. <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> That's pretty harsh. Yeah, just joking, just joking. Well, so, <laughs> he actually did an awesome job. I mean, he did he, he did an awesome job for 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 the five uh, days, and we only um, uh, tried to shoot um, in the mornings and also in the evenings to get the perfect lighting, light conditions. So it was very hectic. I mean, even even before we get to the final editing, it was always on the rush, always on the run, because you want to get as many locations as you want and uh, and try to get the perfect light and. And, and I, I, I can tell you guys, we tried three days in a row to get at five in the morning and get uh, this uh, shot with an empty tram. So we needed an empty tram, like, and we wanted to get the first tram that comes to the station and not have any people in. And you'll be amazed how many people travel somewhere at 5 a.m. in the morning. But that's not the case. Like, we never did it, but we, we got at uh, uh, three days in a row, 5 a.m. in the morning trying to get this shot and, and we never did and he didn't make it to the final edit. And I was like, I can't believe that. <laughs> so it was like really hard. <laughs> so the, the, the cameraman guy, like we're not firing him. <laughs> well, this is another aspect of the, the, the kind of doing this in five days was uh, a lot of fear and paranoia about the weather. I mean, I remember I was just obsessively checking the weather, just like, what if it rains for four days? Like, what are we gonna do? <laughs> You know, so gotta do something for the oceans, you know. <laughs> <laughs> there you yeah. go. Well, you guys, I think uh, we are very excited that you're a part of this, and you did a great job. Yeah, and thank you so much for jumping on the call with us today. Yeah, it's great to hear your insight and your experience with the challenge. And we can yeah, all here. No, guys, th thank you that you organized this because, like, I think it, it this is an awesome thing, and it. Uh, uh, gives an opportunity even for you know uh, like remote and small teams like ours uh, uh, to do something that uh, that is uh, of significance and something that somebody is gonna you know notice and let's hope that uh, that uh, this is gonna touch a, a soul or two and as I like to joke like since we get the words as I like to joke here around so Leonardo DiCaprio, he still doesn't have any rewards on his climate change movie, and we have six, so it's kind of, oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted the grizzly bear in our film, but... <laughs> <laughs> we don't have grizzly bears next around time. the area. Like, we, next, we can time. Get... Next, next time. Absolutely. <laughs> All right, well, thank Thanks, you guys, guys so much. Thank you. Yeah, thank, thank you. you. Thank you, Kate. Thank you, Lynn.